If you could go back in time and share one piece of advice with your younger self, what would that piece of advice be? Welcome to the channel guys, my name is Sean and if you're anything like me, you're a deep thinker and you enjoy reflection. Today I'm at the brand new Paragon Skate Park out here in Paris, getting an early morning skate in. And while I'm here, I have five pieces of advice I'd wanna share with my younger self. So the goal with this video is to kind of provide some insight for myself and for you guys, hopefully. This is probably a different kind of video compared to what you guys are used to on my channel. The first piece of advice I would share with my younger self is don't let your environment or your situation dictate what is achievable and what you are capable of. So to provide some context for that, like I grew up in government housing. My dad struggled with addiction, which meant I was always in survival mode. He didn't set a positive example at all. Like instead, all I witnessed was like victim mentality. And it made me believe that I couldn't achieve anything more than the bare minimum. For an example, for the longest time, I believed I would never own a car or hold a driver's license. And that limiting belief held me back till I was about 23 when I finally decided to put my mind to it and pull my finger out and get my shit together, get a car and get a license. To some people that may seem like really minuscule, but for me, that was like a massive milestone because growing up, neither of my parents drove or owned a car. So that was like one of the biggest things I accomplished in my younger years. And it made me feel hopeful because what I set my mind to, I could accomplish. The second piece of advice I would share with my younger self is that your interests and passions are so important. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Growing up in a broken home, I was left without a male role model. And this left me super angry, super confused. Skateboarding, graffiti, and music, all of those things become my outlets. So I was naturally drawn towards those three passions, but I always downplayed them because I felt like they weren't important compared to what other people were pursuing at my age. While kids at school had like supportive parents, like guiding them towards careers, I didn't have the same for my passions. So if I could travel back in time and speak to my 16 year old self, I would tell him his passions matter and you need to focus on honing in on your craft and just ignore what people may say. We all have our own lives to lead and it's super crucial to pursue what makes you happy at the end of the day. It's okay if you don't have passions or hobbies and you just wanna to go to work, that's valid. But for creative people, not following your heart and following your passion is like a death sentence to your creative spirit. So the third piece of advice I would offer my younger self is that guidance doesn't necessarily have to come from your parents or from anyone close to you. Like I often rejected the guidance we were given in school because I just didn't feel like they understood me at all. I just felt like I was different compared to the other kids. And I really couldn't take them seriously because it's like, why, why would I listen to my year 10 advisor? You know, like what, what do they really know about me? So basically growing up, I had like minimal guidance. Like I'm super grateful for my mum for like putting good morals into me. But during my crucial years growing up, like 15, 16, 17, my dad was either in rehab or jail and I didn't have a male role model around so I struggled to regulate my emotions and I felt super insecure and angry that other kids had normal families and I come from a broken home and I didn't have anyone to turn to basically like I was on my own and this is basically way before YouTube or when YouTube was like in its infancy so most of the self-help stuff was in books and the thought of reading a book when I was a teenager was lame to me so yeah I wasn't really into reading books back then I wish I would have because I missed out on a lot of good stuff. So if I could talk to my younger self, I would tell him that guidance can come from many unexpected places and often the best pieces of advice and guidance come from complete strangers. And it is super hard to be open and vulnerable. Trust me, it sucks being open and vulnerable, but often it leads us to understanding ourselves better and understanding others better. Like it's a beautiful thing to be vulnerable, but you just got to open up. So the fourth piece of advice I would offer my younger self is that you need to stop worrying about the future and having everything figured out. There's things that are out of our control and it's okay to let go. Growing up, like I had no rules and so much freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. And it made me confused when I saw other kids at school that had responsibilities and chores and curfews and stuff. It made me feel like my freedom was like a superpower because I could just brag to my friends like, oh yeah, I don't need to ask. I can just leave the house and do whatever I want. But over time, it made me stress out because of the lack of structure, the lack of plans, the lack of goals in my life. And I just acted off complete impulse. Like I could go skate when I wanted to. If I didn't want to go to school, I could just stay home. This chaotic lifestyle kind of made me feel lost and disorganized and was probably not the best thing for me at that age. I spent the majority of my time at the skate park that become like my safe haven away from all the chaos at home. But instead of like enjoying my youth and just being out skating, having fun, being 16, I was just stressed all the time and worrying about like, when is the next bad thing gonna happen? Like, cause I often felt like 
I had to be the peacekeeper at home and I had to like mend things that weren't meant for me to mend and it sucked. That kind of pressure should never be put on like a teenager or a child. So yeah, that would be my piece of advice to my younger self is just as hard as it would be to do because saying and doing are two different things. Just stop worrying about things, enjoy your life. You only live once and you're only going to be 16 for one year, 17 for one year, 18 for one year. The years go by so quick. You need to enjoy your youth, stop worrying about things and uh, try to let go of things that you can't control because at the end of the day, all we can kind of control is ourselves and what our behavior and what we decide to respond to and how we decide to respond as well. Fifth piece of advice I would have for my younger self is that your self-worth and self-esteem isn't a reflection of the hard times and situations that you've been through. During my teenage years, I had a really low sense of self, like my self-worth was so minimal. And I think I gravitated towards graffiti because it gave me a sense of accomplishment and it kind of fed my ego at the time. So like I, I really just like fell in love with writing graffiti. With that being said, I was just super ashamed of how I lived and my self-image was so low. So I rarely spoke up for myself. I always wanted to be in the background and that broken foundation of low self-esteem It followed me into adulthood and it kept me in toxic relationships toxic friendships toxic jobs in fear of speaking up for myself and making a fuss So if I could give my younger self this piece of advice it would be this you are valuable and greater than the hardships you've faced and you are not a victim of your circumstances. Always trust your gut and don't hesitate to speak up for yourself. Speak your truth. Those tough times are a testament to how strong you are and how much potential you hold. I honestly believe that our inner child and our younger selves still exist within us. If you're able to heal your inner child and younger self and nurture it, it can only do good things for your like present and future. There's still things that get to me now and like uh, things of my behavior that I, that I do subconsciously because I've been doing it for so long but then when I take a step back and like try to really think of why I do those things it always just relates back to my growing up and my childhood and me being able to see that helps me kind of put an end to it and helps me think in a different way and behave in a different way which is helpful like just now I feel like I'm finally truly stepping into my confidence and my power I can walk around with my shoulders back and my chest out and be confident within myself, not be shy to speak up and tell people like what's up and like speak my truth. Like just now I'm figuring that out. And I wish I would have known that years back because it would have saved me so much time and so much pain and so much heartache. But hey, life goes on, we learn. All the things that happen along your timeline since you're a kid until now, they all account for something. I spent many years just, uh, you know, being in the background, not making a fuss, just existing because I felt like, oh, you know, I'm not worth anything more than just to exist in the background. I'll let everybody else pursue their dreams, pursue their passions. I'll just kind of kick it in the background because I don't have the self-confidence to demand what I want and go after it. So just now, I'm finally feeling like I'm stepping into my true power and my true confidence. And I'm able to really confidently say, this is what I want and I'm gonna go after it. Instead of just being like, oh, I'm just gonna dip a toe in and see how it goes, like, no. Modesty is a scam. Being modest just kind of sets you back in life. Within context, I'm not saying like, oh, being modest is bad. I'm just saying that sometimes modesty can hold you back, if that makes sense. So I actually posted on the community page on my channel, what advice would you give to your younger self? I got quite a few responses. A lot of them were like good stuff. And then there was one reoccurring piece of advice. And I think it's funny. This is an extra piece of advice from a younger self. It's buy Bitcoin. When I was like 15, 16, Bitcoin had just come out in high school. And I remember it being like literally one cent. And I was getting like $250 a week from Centrelink. If you're not from Australia, Centrelink is kind of like uh, social security. So if you're eligible when you turn 16, you get youth allowance. So I was getting 250 bucks every two weeks. And if I put like a hundred bucks in every two weeks into Bitcoin, I would be filthy rich. But uh, I thought it was a scam along with a lot of other people that thought it was a scam. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any advice for your younger self that you want to share, drop it in the comment section below, I'm trying to get a conversation going. But uh, yeah, check out eveningmob.com. Check out the rest of my videos and stay tuned for uh, more content. More content on the way. Cheers for watching. Red, I want you to go to his house. Blow that joint up. Don't let nobody out. Oh.
get Trigger Man, bring him to me, cause I'm tired of this Trigger Man stuff in Tennessee. Now all the time while this stuff is going on, I called up another roadie on my flip phone. Junior, I want you to call down the Texas Special Order, me a man.